One of the biggest success stories in comedy has been the story of Mr. Bean. The character, portrayed by Rowan Atkinson, first hit British airwaves in 1990. And in the years that followed, the character would become an international sensation. Part of the enduring fandom all over the world stems from the creative forces behind the character, but also the non-verbal physical comedy at Mr. Bean's core. While most are familiar with the classic sketches that cemented the character's legacy, as well as the two feature films that followed, there are other chapters in Mr. Bean's story which are lesser known, including not only an animated TV series, but also adverts and cameo appearances over the years. Oh no! Wait! No! In this video, I will explore the entire history of the character, from his inception and design, to his present day status as a social media star. I will also look into the minds of the men behind the character, and the man in front, Rowan Atkinson. This is the story of a man who makes the whole world laugh without uttering a single word. The story of Mr. Bean. <laughs> In order to discuss Mr. Bean, we first have to look at the characters that inspired him. While the silent clowns of the Golden Age undoubtedly influenced the character, it was two comics in particular that had a much more direct hand in the molding of Mr. Bean. Jacques Tati, <laughs> Tati, familiar to audiences as his Monsieur Hulot character, was a huge influence on Atkinson's characterization of Mr. Bean. Hulot, much like Bean, is clumsy and naive of the world around him. He also sports a distinguished outfit, inspired by the styles of Keaton and Chaplin. The character of Hulot was introduced in Monsieur Hulot's Holiday in 1953, which would serve as an inspiration for Mr. Bean's Holiday 54 years later. It just struck a chord with me. I, I so admired it. It was a, a kind of an uncompromising comic attitude and setting that I, that I really admired. The next major inspiration on Mr. Bean's style was Peter Sellers particularly his performance as the bumbling actor in The Party. As well as Inspector Clouseau in the Pink Panther films. Once again in these famous characters, Peter Sellers mostly found laughs through their physical comedy. <laughs> and much like Mr. Bean, they wore a trademark outfit. While at Oxford University, Rowan saw an advert for a comedy writers group. It was at that group that he met writer Richard Curtis. The two had similar comedy sensibilities and formed a partnership, with Richard often acting as the straight man to Rowan's zany stage characters. And so there are many different kinds of king, the benign king. The benign king with a physical defect. <laughs> In these early sketches, it's very clear that the Mr. Bean character is there, just not yet fully defined. First crucial step is having arranged to pick up your date, not to look like a complete idiot when she opens the door. <laughs> Richard and Rowan would go on to create Black Adder together which would become one of the most influential British sitcoms of all time. When the fourth series of Black Adder had completed, Rowan and Richard returned their focus to this odd, silent character that they had performed on stage at university, and began to develop a comedy vehicle for him. When tasked to give this character a name, the two began to cycle through the names of different colors at first almost settling on Mr. White. They then moved on to vegetables, as they found those names to be more comical. While Mr. Cauliflower was considered, they eventually settled on Mr. Bean. <laughs> 
At the time, ITV was looking for a 30-minute show that could fill a gap in their schedule. And Mr. Bean just so happened to fit the bill. <laughs> the first episode, broadcast on January 1st, 1990, was written by Atkinson, Curtis, and Ben Elton. It was viewed by over 13 million people that night. When the demand for more episodes became clear, comedy writer Robin Driscoll was brought on board to help flush out stories. Rowan and I did the obvious ones. We got the low-hanging fruit. And what was brilliant about Robin is that he's just kept, as it were, squeezing the lemon, finding new things, finding different ways. The dynamic between these three provided instant comic chemistry. No, 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 no. I'm driving. <laughs> Richard Curtis would often think of the scenarios. Rowan would then find even more ways to mine comedy out of those scenarios, while Robin Driscoll would help flesh out the world and the characters around Bean. <laughs> Another essential member of Mr. Bean's creative team was Howard Goodall who composed the music for the TV series. As time went on, staples began to appear in the series, such as Mr. Bean's lime green Mini Cooper, Or his seemingly only friend, a teddy bear named appropriately Teddy. <laughs> he was soon given a girlfriend named Irma Gob. <laughs> and an arch nemesis in the form of a faceless driver of a blue car. <laughs> By constantly changing the setting and adding new characters, the writing team was able to keep the series staying fresh, sending Mr. Bean on a variety of different adventures, including vacations, <laughs> amusement parks, school, <laughs> and even the dentist, finding incredibly powerful comedy situations in everyday mundane scenarios, <laughs> and as much as Rowan shines in his solo scenes, he is always aided by an amazing supporting cast that knew how to draw out the comedy and make his antics even more enjoyable by their reactions. <laughs> As was standard for most sitcoms at the time, a laugh track was added in post. While I don't think this takes away from the series, it definitely doesn't add to it. For instance, here's a Mr. Bean bit that I re-edited to reflect more of a silent movie feel. The physical comedy still comes through, even without hardly any sound. Rowan always believed that the key to playing Mr. Bean was playing him as if he were a nine-year-old child, 
as audiences found empathy in children. Whenever we try to think of Mr. Bean and how he will react or would react in, in certain situations that we're thinking of putting him in, I, I always imagined him as a nine-year-old boy. That's how I always see him. I also love that Mr. Bean is also kind of mean-spirited sometimes, but he still comes off as lovable. It's a true testament to the writing and portrayal of the character. Right. Get in the car. <laughs> While 14 episodes of the series were produced, they were done so over a five-year period, following a non-traditional approach to sitcom production, allowing the team to fully develop their ideas and focus on other projects in between production. Production on these episodes was pretty non-traditional to begin with, as new material was worked out on set the day of filming. This new style resonated with audiences all over the country, though. And due to the silent nature of the character, the episodes could in turn be sold all over the world, where they would find even more acclaim. Für farbenfrohe und lebendige Weihnachten. Überzeugend echt, echt überzeugend. Yeah. And audiences all over the world fell in love with his character. At this time, Mr. Bean also appeared in sketches on Comic Relief. Come in, Mr. Bean! <laughs> The final episode of The Mr. Bean Show aired in 1995, followed by a best of compilation. <laughs> Eventually, Curtis, Driscoll, and Atkinson could no longer ignore offers to adapt the character to a feature film. This is a great and serious work of art, and Dr. Bean will give the occasion depth and dignity. While several high-concept heist films were considered, Richard Curtis kept coming back to the idea of Bean wrecking the lives of an American family. <laughs> Richard Curtis felt that this way, they could use the family as a basis for the movie's story, and then interject Mr. Bean into that story therefore not giving his character the sole responsibility to carry the entire movie. No, 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 Doctor, that is not for the TV, that's for the... <laughs> the movie, which would eventually come to be titled Bean, began filming in 1996. The story centers around Mr. Bean, being sent to oversee an important art acquisition in Los Angeles. What do you think? Nice frame. Being sent by his co-workers from London, who were just looking for an excuse to get rid of him for a few months. <laughs> Here, he makes life hell for his American host, David Langley and his family. He's a genius, right? Yeah, he's, he's eccentric, mm. but... Yes. Yeah. I find this film to be one of the most underrated comedies of the 90s. I know some fans of the original series found this film to be too American in its style, but I've always loved it. Rowan is joined by Peter McNichol in the film, who becomes the perfect straight man to Mr. Bean. Peter's reactions elevate Rowan's performance so much. I love their balance, and the friendship that the characters find in each other. Oh! Jesus! Oh, God! Oh! Oh, Jesus! God! Oh, Mary, Mother of Jesus! Jesus of Nazareth! It's a dynamic that I find sorely missing in the second Mr. Bean movie. Bean the movie became a smash hit worldwide, proving that success was just beginning for Mr. Bean. Following the completion of the movie, Mr. Bean would next appear in a series of commercials for Fujifilm. <laughs> Traditional color films have only three emulsion layers, red, green, and blue, but now there's a fourth layer for exceptionally vivid colors, new Fujifilm Superior. As well as one for M&M's. Hey, make way for Rambo! <laughs> <laughs> now look at this guy. Look out! 
<laughs> You're gonna need a pretty odd shape ball to knock those down. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, wait, no! Ow! Oh. In 2001, ITV announced Rowan Atkinson would return to voice the character for an animated spin-off. This series, which began airing in 2002, expands on the universe of the original show, with characters such as Teddy, Irma Gobb, and the blue car driver reappearing. At one point, there's even an episode that seems to confirm the theory that Bean is an alien. Welcome, yes. oh. ah. You're the one. Say hello, Teddy. Rowan would not only voice the character, he would also act out bits physically for the animators to get inspiration. The show found a new audience for the Bean character, inspiring a new wave of merchandise and appearances of the character. It lasted for three seasons of 18 episodes each, but would later return for new episodes in 2014. After the huge financial success of the first Mr. Bean movie, Rowan was lured into playing Mr. Bean in live-action form once again. In 2001, Richard Curtis wrote a treatment for a film titled Down Under Bean, which found Mr. Bean now married and on a disastrous honeymoon in Australia. For whatever reason, this idea never materialized fully, and the movie eventually became French Bean, which later became Mr. Bean's holiday in 2007, which found Bean winning a holiday to France. The script was written by Hamish McColl and longtime Bean writer Robin Driscoll. This movie returns to the form of the original show, relying instead on comedy scenarios than the subplot involving new characters. I'll always prefer the first film, but this film definitely has its moments. Café? Oh. Oui. Du sucre? Non. You speak very good French? <laughs> Gracias. It's fun to see Mr. Bean alone and on his own in a strange country, but I feel the film lacks that necessary straight man character to flesh out the comedy. It also ends with a bizarre musical number, which I always thought was a little out of place for the character. The film was a huge success in the UK, but failed to find an audience in the US. The word holiday having a different usage in the States might have had something to do with it, with most Americans using the term vacation instead. Rowan made a comic relief sketch that year to promote the film, centering around Mr. Bean going to a wedding. The delight and the tenderness of sexual union. <laughs> Which Rowan said would be the last appearance of the character, as he wanted to move on. <laughs> For a while, that seemed to be the case. Rowan found new success with the Johnny English films, which allowed him to showcase his physical and verbal skills yet again. Everything in order, English? I think you'll find it's rather more than just in order, sir. You're now entering the most secure location in the whole of England. He would then play a Mr. Bean-like character during the opening ceremony for the 2012 London Olympics. And he was even credited as Mr. Bean. But it's pretty clear he's not playing the exact same character when you watch that sketch. Then in 2014, seemingly unannounced, Rowan returned as the real Mr. Bean for a series of pretty fun Snickers adverts. Light Hill Snickers which seemed to open the possibility of the character making a more substantial comeback. <laughs> the following year, he made that substantial comeback in another comedy sketch for Comic Relief, which this time had the character attending a funeral. With the character seemingly out of retirement, Rowan next appeared as Bean in a live bit to celebrate the show's 25th anniversary in 2015. I can drive past Buckingham Palace. God, if I just turn left out of here. Okay. Recently, the character began appearing in a series of Facebook videos titled Handy Bean, 
in which Mr. Bean appears in the opening of several how-to videos. It's me! <laughs> and then shows the audience how to make crafts and cook things. It's pretty clear from watching these videos, though, that they shot all of these intro sequences at once. Oh, one more! With the close-ups of Mr. Bean's hands being a different actor. The Facebook page for Mr. Bean had become so large, with over 86 million likes, and with the Mr. Bean YouTube channel having over 25 million subscribers. And while these videos are fun, they don't really satisfy the need that fans have to see this character again. <laughs> this past year, Mr. Bean celebrated its 30th anniversary, and Rowan went on the record stating once again that he'll probably retire the live-action portrayal of the character, but will most likely return for a new animated movie. As an artist, I can respect that decision, even if it's hard to accept as a fan. It's clear that the character became a phenomenon in ways that were never expected, catapulting the shy comedian to an instantly recognizable figure worldwide. Rowan is a talented comedian and actor, and I'd love to see him continue to branch out to other roles. I get how being known as Mr. Bean everywhere he goes would probably get annoying, and he's done some incredible work outside of the Mr. Bean character that he should also be recognized for. Why, under these silly masks, you'll find no craggy-faced criminals, but beardless, spotty-faced students on a rag stunt. <laughs> well, there are plenty of mature students at college these days. That probably causes Rowan to get burned out of the character every few years, so I understand his need to distance himself occasionally. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to see him return for something that's not a commercial or Facebook video. I would love for Richard Curtis, Robin Driscoll, and Rowan to sit down and maybe write a new series of sketches. With streaming now being the preferred form of television, a new Mr. Bean show would fit perfectly in that medium with no restrictions on length or content. But if that never materializes, and we never get to see Mr. Bean in his live-action form again, I'm at least always glad we have these other shows and sketches to look back on. Watching Mr. Bean proves that humor is universal. And in an age when comedy has become so defined by speech and verbal humor, it's always a welcome change of pace. There are many ways to define talent, but watching a man make generations of people laugh all over the world is talent that only comes around once in a lifetime, and I'm at least glad I've been able to witness it. Oh. <laughs> yes, I normally stay till the end as well. You can go now if you, if you wish.